one thing that that I I've been thinking about when it comes to this is you know all of this sounds like some sort of alien technology just landed upon us and we, we have to deal with it um, and understand what we can do with it. Um, but how much does like a the general public need to know? How much do you need to actually understand? Or do you think this will just change over the generation that you will understand more and more uh, as you learn this in school or, or, or whatever? Do you think, how much does actually one need to know? Well, great technology doesn't require you to understand how the technology works in order to use it. So if you use a gun, you don't have to know how a gun works or use a electricity. When you flip the light switch, you don't have to know how electricity is generated and transmitted. Uh, it's the same for a cell phone. You know, the, to make a call on your iPhone, you don't need to know how the iPhone works or how a touchscreen works or you know, 4G works or any of these types of things. So similarly, if blockchain is to be real, it has to fade into the back and great consumer experiences have to be built on top of it. And really what it is, is it's infrastructure. So it's not the concern of the mainstream. It's the concern of the product makers and uh, the entrepreneurs, the UI UX people to figure out how to make this technology mainstream. And usually it's re related to a problem domain. So for example, you're in Kenya, you pay 6% per month right now for a loan for your business, and you'd like to pay 1%. Well, the solution for that probably will involve a blockchain the end of the day, because you're removing middlemen, so you're reducing the overall cost of servicing the loan. Or maybe you are Norwegian and you travel to Spain and you get very sick, and your doctor in Spain needs to see your medical records from Norway. How do they get transmitted uh, from Norway to Spain? The solution of that problem could involve a blockchain as the access control system to enable that transfer in a trustless way. Uh, or maybe uh, you're a web developer and you're creating a website and you want to replace your username and password with decentralized identifiers. It's a type of ID that's blockchain based for the most part. Uh, and so you can get rid of passwords and usernames and have a much more secure login experience for your users and pe because people tend to reuse the same password everywhere, these types of things. So these are examples of real life uh, problems. And uh, Really, what blockchain is offering is just like Ruby on Rails, or just like Meteor, or just like uh, you know React, uh, or any other framework, uh, a collection of tools that you can use. And with any solution, there's going to be probably some centralized components. But now, for the first time, as a developer, as a business owner, you could add decentralized components as well. And it's not academic. I, I mean, look at uh, uh, only fans, for example, they just announced, hey, we're not going to do pornography anymore. That's $2 billion of money that just got shut off. But what happened was that their payment processors came to them and said, yeah, we don't want you to do that anymore. So they said, great, okay, so we're going to have to throw away like 80% of our business as a company or else we go out of business and somehow try to find a way to survive without that. So really hard uh, you know, to, when you have bad systems to compete in a global economy, really easy to compete in a global economy when you do. When the internet came out, suddenly we all got to know each other. We could talk to each other. We could send information instantaneously. And that disrupted every type of business. So now our industry is all about the movement of value instantaneously, the movement of identity instantaneously, the movement of commercial arrangements instantaneously anywhere in the world without necessarily trusting people in the process of doing that. And of course, just like the internet, it's gonna be vastly disruptive on business. It's gonna create a, new, a lot of new economic activity. But as for the mainstream consumer, what's gonna happen is you'll have gateways like browsers and cell phones and these things that basically beam you into that world. And you don't really have to know how that world works for it to be useful to you. You're just a beneficiary of the things that it does. Hmm.